The topic I'd like to discuss right now is called bubbling. Uh, the term bubbling with regard to the SAT is the word used to refer to bubbling in your answers. And the reason why I feel like I need to talk about it is because I, I've been tutoring for years and I've met a lot of kids over the years who uh, you know, will sort of grade their answers and they'll get a given one wrong and, and, and we'll go back to that one you know, and I'm assuming that when we go back to it that they must have messed something up somehow in, in the solution and then I'm going to have to now explain to them why they got it wrong or, or you know, how to get the answer right. And then the kid will look at it and say, oh my gosh, well, that's, that's, that's exactly what I did and that, and that was my answer. Like, and then they look at their answering sheet and they say, I bubbled in the wrong one. I, I knew the answer was C. I don't know why I bubbled in B. And, and, and so, you know, over the years, I've gotten a lot of students actually do that where they just, they can't explain why they did it. They get a certain answer and they bubble in a different, a different slot. They get the number right. It's number seven. That's right. But I bubbled in C instead of B or vice versa. And so what I, what I have to stop and tell the student is this. I say, listen, after they've made that mistake the first time, I say, listen, we have now figured out that you are capable of bubbling in the wrong answer. How are we going to deal with that? Because that is the most frustrating way to lose a point on the SATs. And so my suggestion is this for students, that I, I think what a lot of kids do, and this is kind of natural, they work on a problem, they get the answer, they bubble it into their answer sheet, and then they move on to the next problem. They do that problem, they get an answer, and they bubble it into their answer sheet. What I suggest is this, that when you look at a, a page on an SAT, it usually contains several problems. In the math, for example, there will be maybe four or five questions on a page. In the reading comprehension, it could be as many as eight on a given page. So what I suggest to students is this. When you're working on the test, just work in the answer booklet and, and begin the test with number one, obviously, and go in and get, let's say it's a math section. There are four on a page. Get those four done. And as you finish each problem, just mark your answer in the test booklet and move on to the next one. And so what you're doing is you're really just focusing on the math and, and you're recording your answers as you're working out the problem in the booklet. And when you finish that page, before you move on to the next page, you take those four or five questions and you bubble those into your answer sheet. And I think that, that the reason why this helps eliminate those types of careless errors is you're concentrating on math, and once you finish the math, you're now concentrating exclusively on bubbling in. And when you separate the two tasks, you're much, just much less likely to, if you're doing, you know, you got A, B, C, and E, to go over here and go A, you know, to mess that up. And so my point is this, that when you have found out that you are capable of bubbling in a wrong answer, you need to change your technique. And again, my suggestion is do a full page, record your answers, then move on to the next page. As you get closer to the end of the test, you want to revert back to the old way, and when you're getting towards the end of the test, go problem for problem. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have a completely you know, finished page in your booklet. You haven't bubbled it in and they say put your pencil down and you've gotten four that are unrecorded. So what you want to do is begin the test by, you know, and I think you're most, li like, most likely to mess up at the beginning of a test when you're still not warm and you're maybe a little bit nervous and things aren't feeling right. Use my technique when you're at the beginning of the test, when you get towards the end, go question for question. When they say put your pencil down, put your pencil done, down, and that's the way you can maximize your score.